This open house is being conducted in a hybrid format to provide multiple ways for the public to receive information about the project and provide input. This open house is being conducted in person, virtually through GoToWebinar, and over the phone. If you dialed in today on a telephone line, the PowerPoint presentation is available on the project webpage at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 419-772-2. The environmental review, consultation, and other actions required by applicable federal environmental laws for this project are being, or have been, carried out by the Florida Department of Transportation, FDOT, pursuant to Title 23, USC Section 327 and a Memorandum of Understanding dated May 26, 2022 and executed by the Federal Highway Administration and FDOT. The Florida Department of Transportation is required to comply with various non-discrimination laws and regulations, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Jennifer Smith, District 5 Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Deland, Florida, 32720, by phone at 386-386. 943-5367 or email at jennifer.smith, the number two, at dot.state.fl.us. You may also contact Jacqueline Paramore, State Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 605 Swanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399. 0450 by phone at 850-414-4753 or email at jacqueline.paramore at dot.state.fl.us. This information is shown on a sign at the in-person location, on the project website, and in the open house notifications. This open house was advertised in the Florida Administrative Register on FDOT's Public Notices website and the project webpage and in the Daytona Beach News Journal. Additionally, adjacent property owners, elected and appointed officials, government agencies, and interested individuals were also notified. A Project Development and Environment, or pd e study, is a blending of engineering evaluations environmental assessments, public engagement, and agency coordination. The process complies with the National Environmental Policy Act requirements and is used to determine the range of potential solutions, known as alternatives, to be evaluated, and the potential impacts and enhancements associated with these alternatives. In some cases, the pd &E and design phases can overlap, and that's what's occurring on this project. This helps fast track the process. As shown, design is fully funded, right of way is partially funded, and the construction phase is not yet funded. The I 95 interchange with US 1 is located within the city of Ormond Beach in Volusia County. The interchange is the gateway to these communities and serves a high volume of a unique traffic. The interchange provides access to world class entertainment venues throughout the year such as Speed Week, Bike Week, and Biketoberfest. The limits of this study encompass approximately one mile north and one mile south of the interchange along I-95. Along US-1, we are evaluating widening from the existing four lanes to six lanes between Broadway Avenue, which is also Plantation Oaks Boulevard, and Destination Daytona Lane, a distance of approximately one mile. Next, we'll talk about the existing characteristics of the study area. The interchange was designed and constructed in the early 1960s. In the decades since its construction, design standards have been updated to keep pace with automobile technology, safety requirements, and driver characteristics. As such, 
Some of the original interchange elements, like the median openings and driveway connections, no longer meet current standards. The Florida East Coast, or FEC, railroad that parallels US-1 to the south and the cellular communications tower located within the northeast quadrant are additional existing features that will influence the design of potential solutions. Additionally, the tight loop ramps and the vertical clearance of the I-95 bridges over US-1 do not meet current FDOT standards, and the existing bicycle and pedestrian features along US-1 do not extend the entire length of the study segment. As the approved mixed-use developments within the area like Ormond Crossings and Plantation Oaks are built out, thousands of new vehicles will be added to the local roadway network, many of which will use the interchange on a daily basis. And with this, congestion will intensify. For example, the analysis forecasts traffic out to the year 2050 and predicts substantial increases in traffic volumes on both I-95 and US-1. Traffic is predicted to increase by more than 40% on I-95 and will more than double on US-1. Safety is FDOT's number one priority. This graphic, or heat map, represents the concentration of crashes recorded within the interchange area in the five-year span from 2015 to 2019, with light green showing the least number of crashes and red showing a cluster of high crashes. Hotspots in the map, including two fatalities, are generally located along US-1 at intersections, median openings, and driveways. An additional hotspot is located south of the interchange on I-95. The crash history emphasizes the purpose and need for this project. The purpose of this study is to develop and evaluate alternatives that will accommodate the existing and future travel demand, improve safety, and enhance the pedestrian environment. This project is needed to improve traffic operations and mobility, reduce congestion, and enhance safety for all modes of travel, including bicyclists and pedestrians. Multiple alternatives were initially developed and evaluated. The safety, traffic flow, and constructability of each alternative were analyzed, and three alternatives were selected for further evaluation. These alternatives include a no-build alternative, where the existing interchange would remain, and two build alternatives. The build alternative options that would replace the current interchange include what's known as a diverging diamond interchange, or DDI, and an offset intersection interchange. The no-build alternative assumes that no improvements would be made to the interchange ramps I-95 or US-1. This means the existing substandard conditions would remain, traffic operations and mobility will degrade, congestion will intensify, and the current bicycle and pedestrian facilities would not be improved. As such, the no-build alternative does not meet the project purpose and need. Several operational and design principles guided the development of the build alternatives. These principles address the area's existing and future traffic conditions, existing infrastructure, and safety. The build alternatives incorporate these principles with modifications to US-1, I-95, and the interchange ramps as described on the next few slides. The existing typical section for US-1 consists of two lanes in each direction, a partial bicycle and pedestrian network, and an open drainage system. With the no-build alternative, the four-lane US-1 would remain in its existing condition. The PD&E study determined US-1 must be widened from its current four lanes to six lanes to satisfy the project's purpose and need. Two proposed six-lane typical sections were developed for the build alternatives. The DDI typical section consists of one new travel lane in each direction. As shown, the travel lanes would consist of a total of three 12-foot lanes, which would provide more space for movements through the DDI curvature. 
Curbs and gutters will be constructed to collect and process stormwater runoff, and 14-foot shared-use paths will be provided in both directions to safely serve pedestrians and bicyclists. Similar to the DDI typical section, the offset intersection typical section also consists of new travel lanes, curbs and gutters, and 14-foot shared-use paths on each side. As shown, the travel lanes would consist of two 11-foot lanes and an outer 12-foot lane in each direction. The preliminary analysis indicates that both typical sections will generally fit within the existing right-of-way. Now let's review the two interchange build alternatives under consideration. The interchange and roadway modifications proposed for the diverging diamond interchange alternative satisfy the project's purpose and need and include the following improvements. The substandard loop ramps would be eliminated. New ramps, designed to current FDOT standards, would be constructed to provide additional capacity and safely serve all movements between I-95 and US-1. The DDI configuration along US-1 reduces or eliminates conflicts between left-turning vehicles, thereby enhancing the capacity to make left turns and minimizing traffic backups at intersections. The FDOT produced a video that shows how a DDI operates. The video can be found on the project website. The existing intersections, median openings, and driveways would be modified to minimize the number of potential conflict points thereby reducing the opportunities for crashes. Please remember, all concepts on display tonight can be found at www.cflroads.com forward slash projects forward slash 419772-2. Like the DDI alternative, the offset intersection alternative also satisfies the project's purpose and need. The substandard loop ramps would be eliminated. New ramps, designed to current FDOT standards, would be constructed to provide additional capacity to safely serve the movements between I-95 and US-1. Primary ramp improvements would include a new southbound exit ramp that bridges over I-95 to connect with US-1 at a single signalized intersection, parallel to the I-95 northbound entrance ramp, and new direct ramps that would be constructed on the south side of the interchange to serve the movements to and from the south. Like the DDI, the existing intersections, median openings, and driveways would be modified to minimize the number of potential conflict points. We encourage you to review the interchange concepts and provide your feedback to the project team. During the pd &E study, we will evaluate the potential impacts and benefits to the social and economic, physical, natural, and cultural environments associated with each alternative. These features listed are just some of the types of analyses included in this pd &E study. Avoidance or minimization of impacts to these features is a key consideration. In addition to these elements, a preliminary drainage analysis will also be conducted. A preliminary drainage analysis will be performed for each interchange alternative during the pd &E study in accordance with all FTOT and St. John's River Water Management District standards. Three alternative pond sites will be considered within each drainage basin to identify the most efficient and cost-effective stormwater solution. The project will also analyze floodplain impacts and floodplain compensation sites. A preliminary evaluation matrix was developed to compare the benefits, impacts, and costs associated with each alternative. Although the no-build alternative would not meet the project's purpose and need, it will remain under consideration throughout the evaluation process. As reflected in this matrix, both the DDI and the offset intersection have very similar impacts, and both meet the project's purpose and need. The pd &E study began last summer and is scheduled to be completed in the fall of 2023. The preferred alternative will be presented at a public hearing anticipated to take place in the spring of 2023. Public input plays a critical role in the selection of the preferred alternative, and as such, public engagement opportunities are planned throughout the study. In addition to today's open house, 
The study team has organized a project advisory group and held meetings to engage stakeholders and garner their input. Contact information will be displayed at the end of this presentation if you are interested in having a meeting related to the project. As a reminder, this presentation, along with all the materials presented tonight, are posted on the project website. Again, the website can be accessed by visiting www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 419772-2. For those in attendance at the in-person location, you may speak to our project staff or complete a printed comment form and return to the study team. If you are participating online, you may submit written questions or comments in the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel. Written comments may also be submitted on the project website at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 419772-2. You may also email your comments and questions directly to the project manager at jesse.bluen at dot.state.fl.us. You may mail written comments and questions to the project manager, Jesse Bluen, 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 501, DeLand, Florida, 32720. You may also call the project manager at 386-943-5167 to provide verbal comments during normal business hours after the open house. The contact information is also available on the open house notification that you may have received by mail. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, thank you for attending this alternatives open house and providing your input on the project. All public comments and questions are part of the public record. If you have comments or questions after the open house, please submit them by July 1st, 2022. All questions will be responded to in writing following the open house. Contact information and all of the exhibits displayed at this open house will be posted on the project website at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 419772-2. Again, thank you for your involvement. Have a good evening. Safety is FDOT's number one focus. Please remember your fellow road users, follow road signage, and share the road. Please take a few minutes to review the displays at tonight's open house and speak with the staff about any comments, questions, or concerns you may have. The next presentation will begin in two minutes. <laughs> 